Hey, kids. Woo Glee here. Uh, doing a quick, quick <laughs> tutorial on the bass line in Audio Tool. Um, the bass line is patterned after a very famous little instrument called the TB303 by Roland. Um, it stands for, stands for transistor bass line or transistor bass. Um, so this is there. Originally, it was designed as a sort of a one-man band bass generator. You'd have your drum machine hooked up, synchronized, um, and then you'd be, I guess, playing guitar or something like that along with it. The um, thing is, these are really, really, really tedious to program. So most people who bought them for that purpose didn't use it for that purpose. Uh, until, you know, the, the house and the techno community got a hold of it and said, Hey, this is a cool sounding mono synth with the sequencer built in. And uh, you start cranking up the resonance and maybe throwing in a little overdrive and it sounds great. Um, so um, Audio Tool is a, is a pretty good reproduction from what I can tell. Uh, I've never owned one in real life because, well, I'd have to sell a kidney for one now. Um, so here is one. Now, there's a couple of quirks about it when you start it. Number one, the volume is all the way down. Uh, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Or not all the way down, but it's not all the way up. So that should definitely be turned all the way up. First thing, okay? Um, yeah, I had one in here from before. I'm just going to delete it. Um, second thing is that they have preset patterns uh, included with the baseline, and they should never, ever, ever be used, ever. Uh, they're, from what I can tell, unless I'm missing something here, uh, they're really random and musically pretty much unuseful, uh, you know. Um, so don't use them. And the easiest way to not use them is to push this happy little button right here. Pattern clear. It's gone now. Okay, so here's what we've got. Here's what we're going to deal with. Um, we have steps. How long? Well, we could set that, but the default is 16. Um, I think it goes up to 64. Uh, I don't. I can't imagine programming a 64 note uh, baseline pattern. Um, you'd have to have the patience of a saint. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I usually stick with either 16 or um, I'm going to show you the really, really easy one starting off now, okay, which is a one-note pattern. All right. Why a one-note pattern? Um, It just provides rhythmic niftiness, okay? It's almost like the synth version of a hi-hat, um, but you have control over the filter, and you can automate pretty much everything. So uh, every step that we have in our sequencer track here, we have to advance to that step and then we have to either make a choice you either turn a note on or leave it off and then we can transpose it up or down an octave uh, and we can use an accent or we can use a slide now the slide is really cool it basically makes a, a smooth connection from one note to the next um, legato in music um, but if it's the same note then it just ties it together okay so if you have five C's in a row and you put slide in between, it's just going to go and be a long C the whole way. Um, now for a one note pattern, that would be a bad thing because then here's what it sounds like. Nothing. Interesting. Something must be soloed on our centroid. Ha! Ah, it is. There. There it is. It doesn't sound good which of course is why we want to avoid that. Um, by the way, if you notice too, even with the filter up, it really does not supply very much of a signal, okay? So generally speaking, the gain is gonna have to be turned up on this thing just to give you enough headroom to like do stuff with. And you can always turn it down at the fader later. Uh, fader later, pull, oh, gator. Uh, but uh, yeah, so give this guy some juice. That seems weird. Uh, it's not. Just do it, okay? Just do it. Just... Um, no, it's better. It's better for your gain structure. You want as much um, signal as possible, um, so that if you need it to get loud, uh, then you get loud. 
So turn everything up to its normal, you know, sort of like maximum level without clipping or distorting. Uh, and then you turn it down at the fader um, so that you have sort of like a zero point for everything. Um, just standard mixing techniques. So, uh, okay, so we're going to turn off our slide here. And then this is what we're left with. All right, now, you notice each note. I'm going to hit my tempo really, really slow here. Uh, 20, 30, that's the lowest it goes. Learn something new every day. Okay, if you listen to each note, it's going, ow, you know, it, it has an envelope on the filter. Now, we can change how much that does uh, by the EMV mode, and we can do how, how fast it decays. Okay, so this is basically the max, like how fast it decays. Um, and of course, the resonance is all the way up. So if we don't use resonance, we get that. Now we can go down an octave as well. So this gives us a five octave range. And now it's just useless, but kind of cool. Square wave. To me, sounds pretty good as an actual bass sound. It's kind of cool, um, but it's weird. It's a really, really different, uh, different sound. Uh, it's, it's really lacking in a lot of super low harmonics. I mean, I can, I can kind of make them out in my headphones, but not a ton. So, um, so where were we? We were here. I like to speed this up too. Yeah, it's a little bit much. Maybe like 130 or so. Okay. Um, so keep it back on this on salty wave, and then now, why would you want this one note? Um, because, like I said, it's just the rhythm of it, all right? Now, I, uh, I made this ridiculous delay. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. It's in here, though. There it is. Let's, let's use it and, um, listen to how it sounds through some delay. That, of course, is the, the mystical, magical awesomeness of this. A reverb, sure. Yeah, you know. So there's that, and then if we had some uh, beatbox action going. Uh -oh. I think I overloaded this delay. It uh, completely was distorting the channel over here. <laughs> okay, so this was my part of my plan was to kind of regenerate this delay back to a channel and so on. It's, I don't know if it works that well, so we have to just be careful with that. Okay, so last things least, um, we can have set up a pattern track for this, right? Um, pattern track, pow, and now we double click to create our pattern. Now, if you look at the pattern really closely, it's got little tiny white lines all over it, right? So that shows us, um, you know, the length of the individual pattern. Okay, so if we crank this up, you can see those lines change dynamically. So down here, my lines are bigger now, or, you know, more uh, spaced uh, farther apart, and so on. All right, so this is just one measure worth, though. Um, so if we keep it like this, what we also are going to need to do is do some automation. Okay, um, automation is going to be necessary for the filter cutoff. Okay. 
thing of course is this we right click on the thing that we want to automate in this case we do create automation for the filter so that pops up nice and outlined in blue okay um, and now what also happens is down here we have a track that has popped up so double click again to create a region no we don't want to do that I'll do okay I'm gonna get this a little bit bigger here um, so there's our region. We can double click it again to open it up. I'll embiggen it a little bit more for you. Um, so uh, our snap comes into play here as well, although it, it doesn't take much. Um, what I like to do is to make a, a hand-drawn uh, region here. So you're going to hand-draw in um, a curve. Um, however you want to do this, you basically double click to create points. Right. So if we want a really slow rise, for example, we would put this thing like here, and we would have this this long drawn out rise time. Okay, so we could put in some like mini curves and stuff in here too, some little extra bits, kind of like a stock graph that generally goes down, but then there's so little little bumps and corrections in the road. You know, main you bumps and corrections in the road yeah so now you can see the knob as well here turning it's like magic it's amazing all right now the other way of course to do this is you just hit your record button which is most enjoyable now you do not need to clear the automation in fact i'll show you you just Filter frequency. Okay, there. We have no tracks. There's nothing there. All there is is a pattern track. So now we just hit record, pow, and move our knob. There. So there it is, and it's done. Obviously, it's a lot more control points, um, but it works well. If you're a, a stickler for neat lines, then you can just delete some of the ones in the middle. So drag and select, and so on. I'm a stickler for neat lines, in case you couldn't tell. No, I mean, this is fine. Uh, I, I have some, some paranoid um, things about, especially my students who are doing this on a Chromebook. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it makes a almost negligible difference, but uh, the more control points, the more information that's being sent. Therefore, the more taxing the program's going to be on their memory. I don't know. I just like to say, hey, Clean up your control points. Or just draw them in by hand because that works too. Um, so that's the baseline. And this is just one quick use. Obviously, you could expand the number of notes in this. You can do a full 16th note, uh, 16 note pattern and um, you know incorporate a little slide and stuff like that. You get some really funky patterns. Uh, check out uh, you know YouTube, for examples, on like good songs that have a lot of TV 303 and I think there's just this like cameo song that has this really funky 303 bass line and it's just awesome it's all about slide and everything like that too so um, yeah anyways thanks for watching happy programming <laughs>